All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy TKD123 here, back in here on PlayStation Source, and we do have an all info video here regarding the PlayStation 5 Pro. It was announced this morning in a live stream with Mark Cerny. If you missed that stream, we did do a live stream reacting to the overall presentation with Mark Cerny about the PS5 Pro. Feel free to go check it out later on after this video. I will leave it linked here up in the cards on YouTube and in the description as well. But we are going to be going over all of the information that we know so far about the PlayStation 5 Pro from the PS blog as well as an exclusive scene that hands-on interview with the console itself. So we're going to be going over release date, different features of the PS5 Pro hardware as well as the very, very controversial pricing of the PS5 Pro. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off here, what about the release date, pre-order, and pricing for the PS5 Pro? We'll be able to pre-order the PS5 Pro on September 26th, as well as the console launching on November 7th, just in time for the Black Friday rush and Christmas rush, all that great stuff, as well as the very controversial pricing of this console being $699 USD. On screen, you'll see a bunch of different currencies as well, which this is definitely a reflection of the overall kind of state that the world is in in terms of the economic standpoint across all different markets. But uh, for US territory here, it is $699, and that is definitely a steep price. We'll talk more about that in the future of this video but definitely see price how are we feeling about the price so far about the ps5 pro so the way mark Shoney broke this whole thing down was that there are mainly three different pillars to talk about involving the ps5 pro's feature suite and abilities and features of the overall console he first said that the ps5 pro will have an upgraded gpu saying on the ps blog quote with ps5 pro we are upgrading to a gpu that has 67 percent more compute units than the current ps5 console and 28 percent faster memory speeds overall this enables up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, making the experience much smoother. So this will be able to garner a lot of games that have a wide variety of different higher frame rates and higher resolutions to games across the board. And we'll go over that whole initiative that they are talking about later on in the section with the PS5 Pro Game Boost and Enhanced Image Quality features. But you will be getting a lot more GPU power with the PS5 Pro in comparison to the base PS5. Next up, he does talk about the other pillar of the PS5 Pro being the PS5 Pro's advanced ray tracing capabilities. Quote, we've added even more powerful ray tracing that provides more dynamic reflection and refraction of light. This allows the rays to be cast at double and at times triple the speeds of the current PS5 console. So if you don't know, just super, you know, really base level explanation of ray tracing, that is the way reflections and light bounce off of different surfaces, whether it be a more clear reflection like water or glass or a more diffuse fuse light bounce that you'll see with concrete or different other rough textures in game environments. So this just allows lighting to better refract and reflect at a more true to life's quality standpoint, as opposed to having baked in lighting that looks a very specific way and that is not dynamic like ray tracing is. So that is the capability of ray tracing. Overall, really cool, you know, really cool feature, but it does take up a lot of resources. So having this bigger GPU to be able to support the advanced ray tracing will be very much welcome here with the PS5 Pro. And lastly here, the major pillar of PS5 Pro, something that I really, really was eager to see when this leaked a few months ago, that is the PS5 Pro's AI-driven upscaling techniques, AKA, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, aka PSSR. And they say on the blog here, quote, we're also introducing PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, an AI-driven upscaling technique that uses a machine learning-based technology to provide super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. So basically, this is very analogous to PC techniques that you'll see on the market now with different cards that go by the names of like DLSS or a bunch of other different ways of of saying that in different formats of it, where DLSS is, I believe is deep learning super sampling or, or something along those lines, where basically that will take an image, let's say they have the game running at a native image quality of 720p. They can use AI to be able to fill in the different pixels without necessarily processing it from a GPU or CPU standpoint and make it appear at a higher resolution. So you can upscale certain things to look better better 
through the assistance of this AI kind of process, as opposed to brute forcing the performance through the hardware itself. So really cool techniques. I do think that this will bode for us to be able to receive higher quality looking games without needing to sacrifice things like performance. So the, you know, true hope of 4K60, which is something that they are targeting here that we'll talk about later on, will be achieved here with this technique. It's very, very important. I really like to see this, you know, come to fruition and I cannot wait to use it here on PS5 Pro. While those three features will be used for upcoming PS5 titles and just PS5 titles in general, they do have these two different additions to the feature set that will improve existing PS5 games as well as PS4 games that support PS5. So we have PS5 Pro Game Boost and Enhanced Image Quality feature sets for the PS5 Pro. With PS5 Pro Game Boost, they will apply to more than 8,500 PS4 games playable on PS5 Pro that may quote, stabilize or improve the performance of supported PS4 and PS5 games. And they also have this notion of enhanced image quality for PS4 games specifically that will also be available to boost resolution on PS4 games for PS5 Pro. These upgrades will be offered as a free software update to take advantage of PS5 Pro feature sets and will be indicated by a new PS5 Pro enhanced label that I assume is very similar to the PS4 Pro enhanced label that we got during that era of generation with the PS4 Pro. So overall, you know, I think this is a very, very great thing to hear. I love hearing that the PS5 Pro will not only be able to bolster upcoming new games, but also games in the past will also get a bit of a boost as well in terms of their performance and resolutions with the PS5 Pro game boost as well. So they did announce some games that will be available to access these enhanced features. They go as follows. Alan Wake 2, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Demon Souls, Dragon's Dogma 2, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, yes sir, the goaded Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Gran Turismo 7, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon Forbidden West, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, The Crew Motherfest, The First Descendant, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, and more will be coming in the future as well. So we do get some really, you know, useful kind of comparisons in this 9 minute breakdown. We did get to see Square Enix post some screenshots of our beloved FF7 Rebirth running on PS5 Pro and they do seem to be aiming at that 4K60 overall look for PS5 Pro on FS7 Rebirth, which is great to hear. And we did have some words from CNET who went hands-on with the PS5 Pro and they were able to see FF7 Rebirth running on PS5 Pro. And they had this to say about that experience. Quote, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in particular popped compared to the fuzzier graphics on the existing PS5 version. Everything was sharper and still 60 FPS smooth. It felt like putting new glasses on. That is great to hear because that game in the open world sections definitely looked a little soft, definitely looked a little fuzzy on 60 frames performance mode. So definitely great to see here that there will be improvements to that game in particular. Yes, I'm biased. I love FF7 very much. So very good to hear that as well. Next up, we got some other miscellaneous facts about PS5 Pro that, you know, some are cool to hear and some are definitely not so great to hear. So first up here, in terms of how this PS5 Pro looks in terms of dimensions, we didn't get exact measurements and specifications, but it is going to be as tall as the original PS5 at launch, but maintaining the width of the PS5 Slim model that came out last year, I believe. So a little bit, you know, as tall as the original PS5 Slim as the PS5 Slim, it looks like. And the PS5 Pro will sport a two terabyte SSD as stock, which is very great to hear. That is a very welcome addition to this console. Having it be two terabytes is, is plenty of space for a lot of people and uh, definitely good to hear as well. The console will also support Wi-Fi 7 support, which this could help those that use the portal. If they are on Wi-Fi, it should be able to have a better stability on PS portal with Wi-Fi 7 support as well. So that's very cool to hear. And as you can imagine, the PS5 Pro will also support things like VRR, which is variable refresh rate and 8K resolutions as well for the like very small percentage of you that have 8K TVs, which is very, very niche and very, very small. Now going into some negative things that we see here with the PS5 Pro, the first one here is that there was no mention of an upgraded DualSense at all with the PS5 Pro. They just mentioned that of course it will come with a DualSense controller, which is interesting to me because we did get a leak a few months ago, I believe back in January of this year where there was a Best Buy leak of a DualSense V2 controller that in its description cited having 12 hour battery life which is much more improved than the original DualSense controller that we have
have now in the market. So that seems to not be with this PSY Pro, which is very interesting to me. I'm not sure if that's going to be just released separately or something like that, or if that will ever come to fruition. But there is a DualSense V2 controller that is still left to not be released yet at this current point and remains a rumor and a leak as of this point of this video. But the PSY Pro will also not include a disk drive and will be an all digital console. Now, this has been a major point of contention for a variety of different reasons, but you just will have to go and buy the separate PS5 Blu-ray drive that is available for sale now. So this happened on the PS5 Slim where they went down to one SKU and you can buy just the PS5 Slim as is and you can purchase a separate disk drive on the side if you'd like to as well. So that disk drive is $80 and that same disk drive that's available on the market right now today will be usable on PS5 Pro and you'll buy that same one for the PS5 Pro as well as just the base PS5 Slim. So overall, you know, I'm very iffy on this because for me personally, I don't buy physical games anymore. I've just been full on digital this whole generation and really it started with last gen to be honest with you. I think the last physical game I bought physically was God of War on PS4, something crazy like that, right? So I'm not one to buy physical games, don't care about it. I have a digital PS5 right now anyway, but there are people that still do of course buy physical media and want physical disk drives on their consoles. However, we can point to a few stats here that I did find online that really paint the picture that this will be affecting a very considerably less amount of people in comparison to the overall gaming market. So PlayStation has said that 80% of PlayStation games were digital as of the first quarter of 2024 in terms of sales. And with Capcom, they are expecting 93.2% of its games to be software based and not hardware physical games to be sold in the year 2024. So overall, the trend is following this overall market of just being all digital. And the consoles do seem to be following in that case with more and more digital hardware being released every single year. So it looks like the PSI Pro will fall suit with that. My only thing is that while I still don't care about physical media, just for me personally, you can't really make a clear case at a pro device not being able to access all of the different feature sets at day one if you want to call physical media capabilities a feature of the console right i do think that that does create a bit of a sore spot i think you might as well have just put in that disk drive for those that want it and you know just cover all your bases but for me personally i don't care but for those that do care about physical media you will have to buy the additional 80 dollar ps disk drive to be able to use physical games on ps5 pro what do you guys think about that down below like what are your thoughts about that because that's a big conversation right now on twitter and definitely would like to know how you feel about it if you are a fan of physical games but for me personally i just think the pro model definitely should be able to access all different feature sets and it's weird that it does not have a disk drive to me in my opinion even though i don't care and lastly here this one definitely does low-key affect me and it's just like bro why or why like why right and like i know this precedent was set with the ps5 slim it did not come with this either but the vertical stand will be sold separately on ps5 pro if you look at the fine print of the trailer and it's like come on man like come on dog like I, like like come on you know and the vertical stand is 30 dollars like come like bro the penny pinching at this point with this in particular is kind of crazy like a stand I can't have a stand with a pro console. Like, come on. You know, that one I think is definitely something that is very much at the forefront for me personally. Just because, like, bro, it's a stand. Let me have a PS5 Pro stand with my PS5 Pro that I'm dropping $700 for. Come on, man. Come on. All right, all right. Let's settle down a little bit here about the vertical stand. Let's talk a little bit here about the last section here in this video involving the CNET exclusive hands-on interview with PS5 Pro, where we got some pretty cool details here. Here that are very small but very cool in the overall grand scheme of the ps5 pro they say that pssr will work on psvr2 games in the future so we should be able to get higher performance and higher resolution and higher frame rates on vr games on psvr2 with p 
PSSR. That is if we get more PSVR 2 games because that is very sparse nowadays in 2024 involving VR, but that's a whole different video for a whole different other day. Sony has said that 40 to 50 games will get PS5 Pro upgrades at launch. They are focusing on 4K 60 upgrades along with graphical boosts across the games as well. So very cool to hear that there. The PS5 Pro could spark a wider range of different modes on a game by game basis. And Mark Cerny has said that he has seen games that have three different graphical modes on PS5 Pro. So that's like your fidelity performance and like performance RT for example with Insomniac games. So there will be different modes that will be available to developers if they so choose so on PS5 Pro. With Gran Turismo 7, it will now have an 8K resolution mode along with a 4K ray traced in gameplay mode as well, which is very cool because GT7 currently only has ray tracing in some replays of different races, menus, and photo mode only with PS5 base. So it's very cool that we'll be able to have ray tracing in gameplay on GT7. The back of the PS5 Pro will have an extra USB-C port instead of a USB-A port. So in comparison, the back of the current PS5 has two USB-A ports. So now it will have a extra USB-C port on the back as well as the front. So very cool to see that there. And lastly, here's something that definitely does pertain to me. If you have a SSD uh, that is expanded on your base PS4 that will be able to be supported on the PS5 Pro with M2 SSD expansion being able to be supported with the PS5 Pro. Very cool to hear that there. So you'll be able to, I mean, I mean, for me, I'll be able to have four terabytes of storage on my PS5 Pro with the internal one already being two terabytes. So I'll be good to go for the rest of the generation easily. So that has been all the information that we know so far about PlayStation 5 Pro. And of course, we will get more info leading up to launch on November 7th. But overall, you know, let's just talk about is this going to be worth it for you as a player, right? I think you will fall into one of two camps here that will really dictate your yes or no answer to if you are getting a PS5 Pro. The price is steep. Let's not front. Okay, $700 is a lot of money, regardless of country. And in, and in other countries, when you're looking at conversion rates from USD to their local currency, in some cases, it ends up being more expensive when you compare it that way. So overall, that will dictate on which country you're at. But overall, man, the price is very expensive, especially ends up being way more expensive if you are a physical games owner. And to play your physical games, you'll have to get that drive, which is another $80 on top of it. And if you just want the vertical stand as well, like me, like, come on, bro. Like, you know, the, the vertical stand, an extra $30, that's going to be $810 before tax in the US if you want to get the PS5 Pro with a stand with a disc drive. So overall, that is a lot of money. And definitely for me, that's going to be more in the 750, you know, range, 730 range before tax with just a vertical stand purchase for me for $30. But overall, man, it is definitely expensive. And I say personally, if you are a casual gamer, if you are someone that is just looking for info on PS5 Pro and you are someone that doesn't really care about resolution, doesn't really care about frame rates, doesn't really care about, you know, all these, all these different features like ray tracing and super sampling techniques that we learned with PSSR and different stuff like that. If you just play basically like Madden, 2K, COD, Fortnite, you know what I'm saying? Like FIFA, like if you're just the, you know, casual gamer, right? Um, this console is definitely Definitely not for you, right? If you're like me though, and if you're someone that plays a wide variety of different games from single player to multiplayer, of course, but definitely single player RPGs and just overall are more in tune with the gaming space, then this pro model may be for you if you care about performance and frame rates and resolution and overall and the all bells and whistles of gaming on console. For me personally, as someone that definitely cares about a, you know, a different plethora of a bunch of different games and and I'm definitely in that hardcore territory for sure, right? For me, I care about having the best possible performance on console and my console of choice just so happens to be the playstation right so for me i am definitely going to get this day one for sure i'll be getting it and i'll be showing you all different content on the channel as well revolving around ps5 pro but i would definitely say that this console is niche and it's definitely not for everyone by any means necessary but down below guys what are your thoughts on ps5 pro what are you looking forward to with it are you going to get it are you not going to get it let me know all your thoughts down below in that comment Comment section check out our links below to our discord twitter all that fun stuff thank all for watching and as always greatness awaits